its way up and down the coast. Uh, it's only a small one, Category 2 or something. <coughs> it's about 400 kilometres off the east coast. And it's round about level with us now down on the Sunshine Coast. Started up north and worked its way down. Definitely put, should put a reef in today. It's already picking up quite a bit. So I think I'll do that. I recommend if you're trying to get a good idea about dinghy cruising, you get some, and you haven't sailed before, you get some experience at a, on a club level, get out there as much as possible. If you've got your own boat, take it out in conditions that you feel comfortable in and then gradually start ramping that up but do it on your home waters before you actually get out there cruising and practice things even to a point of tipping your boat over and filling it up with water seeing if you can right it and bail it out if that's necessary or if you've got something that's got full flotation in it maybe that's not necessary A pretty early start this morning. There's a few deterrents for competition on the boat ramp. They don't like it when it's windy. They don't like it when it's raining. were made some years ago on my mother-in-law's overlocker. Very quick to make with an overlocker. It uh, just, doesn't just sew. If you're not into sewing you probably won't know this but uh, overlocker doesn't just sew. What it does is it sews, it cuts and it trims the edge with a nice stitch that holds it all together. Beautiful. I'm tying a line on with a bowline so that when I push the boat off the trailer I've got something to hold on to. The boat's going to drift away from the pontoon and I'll tie onto a cleat. So the tide is coming in and the wind is coming from the south so I'm going to launch on the downstream side to the river to the river we go leave our worries on the shore and drift away on the river on the river we know sometimes the perfect words are never said I spilled my coffee, I don't feel like talking, my worries just keep growing by the day. I need a moment where the green and blue appear, to spin a rock and watch the ricochet. One of the things that I need to be careful about in pushing this boat off the trailer is that the back roller has got two very nasty metal uprights and uh, if it slides off on the way back down there it can do some damage and take some paint off. And that is precisely what happened here. I should have pushed the trailer back further into the water to avoid that.
Kids are helping on the grill and sneak a taste To the river To the river we go Leave our worries on the shore and drift away I'm setting everything up before we untie from the pontoon. It's a lot easier to do it here than it is than when you're underway. Although in a boat like uh, Moonlight, because she has got some inherent stability, it is possible to do that. But certainly in a lightweight um, uh, modern construction boat, you might struggle to do that and you might end up tipping over. off the main sheet to let it flap and check around current's going to take us that way wind's going to take us that way no other boats to worry about no rock so i'm going to pull up the jib now and then let go of the bow line and wind should push us around i'll give us a bit of a nudge and we can sail off downstream and go about and head out to the mouth of the river As it turns out, the wind is coming from the southwest, and as such, it's blowing almost directly onto the pontoon. So it was a bit hard to backwind the headsail, which would have pulled the bow out, and then we could have sailed off. So I jumped out, gave the bow a good push out um, upstream, and uh, and away we went. Got to watch that you don't get those uh, that main sheet underneath the tiller. Go we sailing. shallow just along I think you could do with a bit more centreboard but just enough I'm glad that I reached that main. It just takes a lot of the stress out of things. There's no need to act like you're racing to get somewhere. And with this wind direction, even though we're going against the tide, which has just about reached its peak. Peak is about 7 a.m. Um, we should be able to uh, just stay on this course all the way. So it's not quite a, so it's a bit of a broad reach.
Right, so we've been talking about how to balance the boat. So there are five principles. So this is the uh, first principle is how do you balance the boat fore and aft? Well, that's an interesting thing. So balancing the boat fore and aft in a cruising dinghy is a lot different when you've, uh, than, than a racing dinghy because it will depend to a large extent on the way you've loaded the boat. And in this particular boat, a lot of weight goes forward, forward of the thwart, because I like to keep things clear here. It will also depend on how many people you've got in the boat, because the biggest lump of mass is your body weight, combined body weight of whoever's in the boat. So we're trying to point fairly high at the moment even higher once we go around this mark. So my weight should be forward. I'm back here because I've got the camera back here. Um, but I should be further forward. So much weight up the bow if I'm cruising that it doesn't matter. So we'll keep going on this. If you're heading up into the wind, trying to make your way upwind as we are now, then the centre board needs to be fully down to increase your maximum lateral resistance because that's what projects the boat forward so the force of the wind hitting the sails versus the resistance from moving sideways is what creates forward movement and this current's probably running at a couple of knots and we're probably doing about three knots so that brings up the issue of course over ground and uh, even though the boat's moving through the water maybe two to three knots, our actual course over the ground is probably only about one knot. We're just creeping along. And that's the current coming towards us versus the speed through the water. This turned out to be a beautiful morning. A couple of scary showers there. Hopefully not too much of that. We talked about balancing the boat fore and aft, but balancing the boat laterally or uh, across the boat is also very important. And again, the biggest lump of movable ballast is yourself and your crew if you have one. You should load the boat so it is balanced, but then once you get out and sailing, uh, you're going to want to shift your weight. So, clearly if I go across here, the boat is going to take on more of a lean. And interestingly, in this little boat, she actually goes a bit better. You probably, you probably noticed she really, really picked up a bit of pace just then. Might have got a gust at the same time. But it lengthens the waterline length and therefore the, the, uh, the boat speed, the theoretical boat speed is higher. It was a very full tide today, made it nice and easy to retrieve the boat. I don't think they have to worry too much about people walking their dogs in the conservation park today.